This is Cody from FrontierLife.net. I just wanted to shoot a brief video today talking about some of the basic gear that mountain men would have carried in the early 19th century. So if you're interested in that, stick around. Okay, so as we get started here, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is that the gear that I have here is not all of the gear that trappers would have used in the 1820s, 30s, and 40s. Um, you know, there were, there were lots of different people that did it in lots of different situations, and they would have had gear that fit them, uh, their needs, and their situation. So all I'm going to show you today is kind of a good basic, um, kind of a basic outline, I guess, of, of the gear that, that trappers would have used. Uh, lots of the, the stuff, the information that I've got um, on this comes from Carl P. Russell's book, uh, Firearms, Traps, and Tools of the Mountain Men. It's a great resource for those of you that are interested in the lives of, of mountain men and trying to learn about it as accurately as possible. Um, you know, Russell goes into really good detail on all of the different tools that they, uh, that they use. Uh, knives, hatchets, traps, firearms. Uh, you name it, miscellaneous stuff, you name it, he's got it. So this is an absolute great book uh, for anyone interested in the topic. So now let's go ahead and start getting into the gear. So any talk about gear of the mountain men really needs to start with a conversation about firearms. Uh, these guys had to have firearms. They were essential to their way of life. Uh, without them, they were pretty helpless. This here is a replica 50 caliber Hawken. Uh, it's a rifle. The guys would have had rifles or smooth bores, and those uh, guns would have had either percussion caps like this one, or they would have had flint locks. Um, guns are great, but they got to have all the tools to uh, to shoot them, and that's where all these things come in. So here you have a powder horn. I made that out of a bison horn that carries the gunpowder, keeps it dry. Back in the back there, you got a powder measurer. Now, let me go ahead and grab that. Um, it's just make sure that as I load it up, I get the same amount of powder in the gun every time. Helps my gun be a little bit, help my each shot be a little more accurate. Right here I have lead, I have a ladle, and I have a mold. And that's for running ball because mountain men didn't buy cartridges like we have. Uh, they had to buy the material, the raw materials, and then they had to make everything themselves. If you're interested in that, I have a video on my channel about how to do that. Here I have a... Some 49 caliber balls. I have a you shoot 49 caliber because I use a 0.1 patch um, with 0.49 um, lead balls, and that makes 0.5, which is 50 caliber. So, and then here I have a little bag to keep those those bullets in. Pretty neat little. Um, I got the idea from James Hansen's book, uh, Rocky Mountain Sketchbook, and it's just a nice handy way to uh, to store them. Got a bone right there, and then I carved this little stopper, so it works pretty good. And then here is just a little, um, oops, too many there, don't get too many. These just carry my caps, right, because it's a percussion cap gun, so that makes the gun go off. So that is the shooting gear. Now we'll move on to some of the other stuff. Okay, so now we'll take just a minute and talk, um, you know, pouches, I guess. And uh, one thing that was pretty common during the 19th century was a market wallet. And all this is is a piece of canvas that's sewn on the top and bottom and sewn up the middle. Holes left in the middle, so when you shut it, um, twist it shut like that, you know, nothing falls out. I got a video on how to make these on my, on my YouTube channel. This is where I like to keep my tinder and uh, my punk wood and stuff like that that I get. I also carry a possibles bag. It looks awful similar to a purse. But it's not. It's a possibles bag. And um, in this, you keep everything that you could possibly need. And this is where all of my shooting gear goes. It's not my firearm. Uh, and also my fire kit. And this is one of those essential things that a guy has to have. Uh, oh, it's real simple. Just a container with a fire steel, rock, and then some char. And you're good to go as long as you got your tinder. Um, so that stuff there is uh, takes care of all that. You got kind of the kitchen right here. This is just a kettle for boiling water, making stew and stuff like that, making coffee uh, right there. You can just make a tripod, string this up, put it over the flames, and you're good to go. It's really light, and so it's really, really useful. Tin cup, drinking water, drinking coffee, all those things, tea, those things those guys would have had, and then a salt horn. Uh, you combine that with 
um, a good a good knife, and that's basically your kitchen setup right there. Uh, just to touch on knives just a second, um, lots of different types of knives were available to them. They did like these butcher style knives um, like this. So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and move on to the next thing. So some other items that would have been really common mountain man gear would have been like, like this uh, tomahawk here. And they could have had a tomahawk, they could have used axes or hatchets. There's lots of different options available, but most guys would like to have something, um, some kind of cutting tool like that. Another thing that I wanted to throw in here, um, just because I don't think a lot of people really talk about it, think about it, would have been a file. These show up a lot in the trade inventories that went out to rendezvous, and having a file would have been really useful. Um, might not be what you would take, you know, if you were just taken off on foot. Um, we'll talk about that here in a, in a minute, but... Um, because just because it is heavy, but if you had the horses um, and you had room for the gear, you'd definitely take it. And that's one thing I wanted to talk about is that I don't have any horse gear here. And, um, you know, mountain men, they definitely would have used horses a lot uh, to transport themselves and their gear over vast distances that they needed to in the West. Um, I haven't made any investment in that period correct horse tack, so I, uh, I, don't, I didn't bring any horse stuff on this, but they definitely would have used a lot of horse gear as well. So now moving on to materials. They had several different options available, and I just wanted to talk about just a few that I'll take with me when I go to the woods um, basically any time. So this is a silk scarf, and um, I wear one of these all the time. Um, they're really nice and they got a lot of different uses, especially for guys in the woods. And then they bought a lot of just extra material too. This is just a little red flannel, uh, that I had. And that, I, I threw that in with the gear because, um, you know, you could use that for lots of different things, not just to make, uh, clothing. And then talking about material, another thing that they would have bought a lot of were these Hudson Bay blankets. These are hundred percent wool blankets. These are the point blankets. Um, and this is the, this is a Hudson's Bay blanket that's made by the company. Uh, so this is historically accurate. This is authentic. Uh, they come in different sizes. And you can see, let me move this stuff quick. Just so you get an idea here. Um, they have the different points on them. This is a four-pointer. One, two, three, four. I don't know if you can see those. Um, and that just tells you the size. This is a pretty big one. 100% um, wool, and they showed up in lots of the trade inventories. And then canvas would have been another material. Um, that, that the guys had access to um, as well, and I would count as part of their gear. Okay, so that's a pretty good kind of basics gear of the mountain men. I'll uh, give you an idea of what they would have been working with. Now, I did mention that I, didn't, I don't have any horse gear, and the, the horse and the mountain men were pretty inseparable. So I wish that I had some of that historically accurate stuff. I don't. Uh, everything I got's modern, um, so I didn't want to bring it. Uh, but when you imagine their gear, you got to imagine having horse gear as well. And then something that I don't, that I didn't bring because again, I don't have the historically accurate stuff is traps. Um, those guys would have had about a half dozen beaver traps a piece, and then they would have brought some caster as well. All the traps I have, they're all modern. Um, I do all modern trapping. So, um, so yeah, so those are some things that are lacking. But as far as just, you know, staying alive, going camping in the woods or whatever, uh, this is the stuff that they, if they had this, they'd be all right. So um, gives you kind of a basic idea of, of what they had. Uh, so if you're interested in this and you want to start kind of putting your little kit together, it's a great way to go out and experience the woods. Um, use the same tools that they used, and then you can practice some of the same skills that they practiced and um, be carrying on that tradition. So um, hopefully you found this interesting. I'd like to see your thoughts in the comments below. And thanks for taking the time to watch this. This is Cody from FrontierLife.net.